Good morning, Senators. Today is day two, Thursday, February 16th. My name is Kayla, and these are my co-hosts, Ethan and Helena. Let's start with our quick news. Another reminder to ski club members, remember to do the job that Mr. Steinhauer gave you this week. Sharing Circle this week. We have our grandfather teachings today. White Elephant Day in Sharing Circle after lunch. Next up, we have school clubs. Lunch Club, also formerly known as TCS GSA. If you are interested in GSA or leadership opportunities, please come to room 126 at lunch, the beginning. Bring your lunch on Friday, February 17th, as we have a very important opportunity to discuss, but the deadline is approaching fast. We need, to, we need student input. We need your input. Drama Club, all actors are required for a rehearsal this Friday. We meet in the atrium from 3.15 to 4 p.m. Extended Friday rehearsal will start next week. And backstage crew, please meet for a 10 to 15 minute meeting at the beginning of Friday's rehearsal. For crochet, cross stitch, and knitting club, our crochet, crochet cross stitch, and knitting club is tomorrow at 7.45 a.m. in room 218. New participants are welcome. Music Club. The TCS band meets today after school for a full practice. Now it's time for TCS, TCS Athletics. For junior boys and girls basketball team, please return your washed jerseys and shorts to your respective coach ASAP. We will be having a pizza wrap-up party at lunch on Friday, February 24th. Only people that have returned jerseys and shorts can attend, so make sure to turn them in. Indoor soccer team. The indoor soccer team has a practice tomorrow, Friday at 7.15 a.m. Badminton season. Tryouts for the badminton team are coming up soon. Senior girls tryouts are tomorrow from 3.20 to 5.15 p.m. Don't forget that Pink Shirt Day is on Wednesday, February 22nd. We would, like, we would now like to show a short video about the creation of Pink Shirt Day. Yeah, so Pink Shirt Day, the first one was in 2007. Um, a young guy, um, brand new to our school, CK, so he was a grade 9 student, um, walked in wearing a pink polo shirt. Uh, no different really than any other shirt I've seen, any other pink shirts I've seen. Um, just, you know, we all sit down that first day of school, we're going to like, I'm going to wear that and that, and we go. And uh, that's, that's the exact thing he did in the morning. And uh, he walked to the doors and a group of students seen him wearing pink, and they immediately started calling him gay. Uh, immediately started pushing him around for wearing simply, you know, a pink shirt. Uh, me and David Shepard, uh, the other co-founder of Pink Shirt Day, we heard about this and uh, seen what this student was going through, and we immediately said that we have to do something here. We have to do something for this student. Um, we have to show him that, you know, us being grade 12 students at our high school, we're seniors, we're supposed to be the leaders, we're supposed to show, you know, the younger, we were the gators, we're, so we're supposed to show, you know, the younger gators um, the way our school runs and the way we want it to run. Um, and for this grade 9 student, it was, I don't want to come back to school tomorrow because I'm now the target. Um, so me and DJ, you know, we thought we needed to do something for him, so we went out that night, we bought 75 uh, pink women's tank tops, um, we bought pink pro wrap um, for, for sports stuff just to make headbands and wristbands. And we went on Facebook and at the time it was MSN Messenger and we just put it as our status. We um, you know, just tried to send it to everybody we could not to support me and DJ because we weren't the most popular guys but to support this issue. Stand up for this kid who, who didn't deserve it. Um, show that you know we can make a difference for him when we stand up in numbers kind of thing. and. Um, we called school administration. Um, school administration had said uh, if anything happens, if there's any fights, if there's any incidents that we could face expulsion, that all of this would be on us. And uh, DJ just instantly before, didn't even hesitate, DJ said, we're still doing it. And uh, that, 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 that was DJ, the, he was just fists up, let's just go into this thing. Um, you know, I, I wasn't worried about being expelled. It probably would have been a great vacation um, outside of the bullying. So it was just kind of something to me that I thought this will be the best fight I'm ever going to fight in if, if it's going to happen. And, you know, this, this young kid I just seen as being me. You know, being bullied for the clothes he wore. Um, you know, I was bullied for the money we didn't have as a family. You know, the way I was in sports, whatever. Um, 
I just seen this kid as being me, so I really wanted to make that difference for them. Uh, we were of a school of about a thousand kids. Um, we showed up the next day, probably about 700 to 850 kids were show, showed up wearing pink. Uh, it was incredible. It just kind of showed the spread of bullying that, you know, there was a lot of people in our school that was being bullied and picked on, that everybody had kind of experienced this in, in one way or another, directly or indirectly. And um, it was just really powerful. It was really powerful to see the student walk through the doors the next day, not wearing a pink shirt because he didn't want to be picked on two days in a row for wearing a pink shirt. Um, and he didn't know what the, what the response was going to be. He knew we were doing this. Um, we saved him a pink shirt uh, to give him once he got to school um, so that he could, he could continue to be part of this because this started because of him. Um, it was just incredible to see how a group of students, a group of young people could kind of band together all issues aside um, to support this student, to support this, this new gator. Um, it was, uh, you know, you could just see when he walked through the doors, the weight that was lifted off his shoulder um, to, to know that he wasn't going to continue to be the bullied kid in school, that he was going to be, you know, just another kid at school, another student, he was going to be able to live his life. We want to catch you being kind. Remember that if teachers catch you being kind on the 22nd, you will be given five house points and a pink ticket that lets you enter in to win some pink swag. So stay kind, Senators. Also in February is Black History Month. Please enjoy another video highlighting black history. Hi, my name is Sharifa and I am a fashion designer. I'm originally from Cameroon and came to Canada when I was 10 years old with my parents. I always loved creating fashion, drawing, colors, just everything that was related to my culture. We used to go back, to, we used to go to the tailor every single week or every two weeks to get our clothes done and that's really from when I got my passion for creation. I now run my own fashion brand called Labarang Designs and I create custom clothing for brides, prom girls and guys and any items for special occasions. I was also an athlete for eight years and represented my home country, Cameroon, where I did track and field. So I'm very passionate about sports. I'm passionate about helping young girls and other women express themselves through either art or sports and really helping them find their voice. Today, I'll be talking about Marie-Joseph Angelique. She was enslaved and brought to Canada by Francois and Thérèse de Francheville and lived with them in Montreal. She really endured a really hard time in Montreal with them. She was abused sexually by her master. She was forced to get impregnated by other slaves. And when she had three babies, they died within a couple of months of being born. In the 1700s, there was an epidemic of pox that just occurred in Montreal and hundreds of people died. And within those people, her master died too. She was promised to be free once the master died, but that did not happen. The widow, Madame de Francheville, refused to let her go and wanted to get her money's worth. So she decided to sell her to someone else. Marie-Joseph Angelique was really not happy with the situation, so she set her room on fire and decided to run away with her love. Unfortunately, they got arrested by the police before they could even make it far enough. She was then brought back and stayed for two months, when one afternoon, she lit her room on fire as a distraction to try to escape with her love, but unfortunately, they could not get far and the police caught them and had to bring them back. Two months later in April, in an afternoon, the whole neighborhood got set on fire. The whole street of St. Paul got set on fire. And of course, who got accused? Marie-Joseph Angelique. The day after the fire, she was taken to court 
and throughout the whole trial she maintained her innocence until she was so tortured got her legs broken and crushed she decided to confess to a crime that we're not sure she even committed on june 21st 1734 she was taken through the street in a garbage bin to her execution she was hanged and left for the whole world to see and then burnt her story was buried for over 200 years and is only now reaching the surface i think that it's important to teach stories such as the one of marie joseph angelique because it teaches us that even here on this land, black people have to fight for their freedom and for their rights. For more information on Marie-Joseph Angelique, click on this link. Well, we are in, a in for a treat today. Wait, why is that? Students are having their Jamaican patties delivered today in council. And you can bring your own lunch to the gym and continue watching Hidden Figures. I can't wait. And that's a wrap for today's broadcast. We hope you enjoyed. Oh, remember <laughs> to be a senator.